gonna be on time. And then I caught you out there with monster energy drinks again. It's okay. Ethan Parker, meet Tweety. Tweety Parker. Oh, I love this duck, man. Hey, Tweety. He says, hi. Um, Ethan Parker, we have you here, the head of Alti Sales, the head of, I believe it's the head of Blissful Prospecting, head of sales, maybe a slightly different title. You're not the foot of sales. We get it. You're the head. Ethan, seriously, it's great to have you on the podcast with Tweety. I'm going to just throw you the mic right now because you have a very Gary V vibe to you and your backdrop and your personality. We've, I've had the pleasure of speaking with you before, so I know what I'm getting into. Shutting up now, go. Ethan, tell us about Alti, tell us about Blissful. And, um, yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm head of sales at Alti Sales. Uh, my job there primarily, so Alti Sales does outsource sales development. So companies hire us instead of you know building up an internal team. We're able to provide them with you know a lot more than they can get bang for their buck on you know per employee, just a whole systematic process. And my job as head of sales is I work with um, the uh, clients AEs and help them in uh, selling those outbound deals. So moving them through pipeline, most of them are pretty top performing, like inside sellers. And outbound is sometimes a bit newer. They haven't done it in a long time or haven't had formal training on it or, or the distinction hasn't been made for them. So I work with them to make sure that uh, the meetings we're setting are getting moved through pipelines. So that's what I do there. And then um, I'm also head of Outbound Squad at Blissful Prospecting. So Outbound Squad is um, a group for top performing sellers, AEs, SDRs, leadership that are really just looking to level up. So we cover all things outbound there as well, both from the prospecting and the selling side. So that's what I do. Tweety, there's going to be a pop quiz. I'm not sure if you are paying attention to all this. Um, let's get right to the meat and potatoes that for the person that maybe is new to sales enablement or a, a young person that's looking at SDR as an amazing first career. We could talk about the benefits all day about that. Getting right to it. How do you manage a group of humans that are by the very nature of sales and a quota under pressure to perform it's kind of like athletes. It's kind of like, it, it's like a, being a part of a sports team and you work as a team and you're their leader. Um, how do you strategically do that with like your software side and then with your Gary V-ish motivational? Yeah. Uh, well, to that point, I firmly believe half of sales is motivation and inspiration. <laughs> you know, even the top, even me, you know, if I, if I, uh, if I'm having a down day or down week, you know, like my results may not be as good that week. So I, I think that that constant state of having some inspiration is important from a leadership standpoint that, you know, people get into the room. They're not like, oh, fuck, here we go. Like they're like, hey, I'm going to talk to Ethan today. You know, like it, it should be a bright spot, not a downer. Um, but yeah, as far as tech stack goes, I mean, dude, we're, we're, we're deep um, at Alti Sales. So we have, you know, we use outreach. Um, we use HubSpot personally for our CRM, but our, we, we also manage CRMs of all of our clients. So like some of them are in HubSpot, Salesforce, et cetera. Um, and then we have three or four data tools. Um, we have really cool, like, uh, I don't even, I don't even know what it is to be honest, but we have some really cool software that we're able to like do some really, really in-depth searching through LinkedIn to like pull out the, you know, target folks that we're going after based on what our clients want to go after. So not Pass, even sure what that's called, Pass but it is. LinkedIn Navigator Enterprise. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's like lives on top of it. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, crazy stuff. Um, as far as like, you know, managing. Um, I just always try to meet people where they are. And uh, I'm a big fan of, you know, one thing that like the remote world is, has kind of eliminated is a bit of that, like, you know, camaraderie feeling or getting to like, hear other people do the thing next to you and, and like learn live and in the moment. So um, I like coaching in a group setting. I do very few one-on-ones. I like to have small groups. I think that people learn a lot from the questions others are asking. Um, it's usually much less intimidating. Like it's not just me questioning you around your pipeline or this, that, and the other. It's, you know, um, for, for me, what most of my coaching sessions are is I have reviewed a lot of calls um, for several different AEs. And I come to that ready with some, I always organize it and like, Hey, these are things that you do well, keep doing that. So kind of a start, stop, continue. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, 
great job here. Here's some low hanging fruit of easy tweaks that we can make that you're going to immediately see an impact in your process. And then here's some like overarching strategy things that I want to work on and unpack with you. And let's, let's workshop this. So just try to make it really collaborative. And uh, I'm not the expert, man. Like I have a lot of experience. I've been successful, but dude, I learn things from people every single day. So I just try to always keep that door open. So that's kind of how I approach it. man. Dude, you are uh, very engaging on uh, video in a way where we can all remember a favorite professor or a teacher and how they, it was much more. They, they started with a joke or their movements, their hand movements, you have that. It's like uh, everything has pushed humans to evolve onto that virtual and projecting a, all these little things, confidence, obviously close the sale, but at the same time, non-manipulative, raw, authentic. And uh, cause everyone can be a little more sensitive to each other. Um, Okay, awesome. So I heard HubSpot in there. I heard Outreach. Outreach is, I'm assuming, your dialer too. Um, yeah, and by yeah. dialer, we mean, uh, you know, again, if you're a college student thinking about SDR as an awesome career track, uh, dialer is, you know, a lot of SaaS companies and companies, they're not using an old fashioned uh, phone anymore. It's all on the screen, it slides in nice and sexy, like um, whether you're using you know what there's five big platforms for dialers and and then you store the data in a crm and so you're using hubspot hubspot you can do more than it's more than just a crm do you utilize those i i remember interviewing for them and i nerded out yeah they do a lot oh, they're, they're into the wheel they love the word the wheel oh do they um yeah a lot of things man uh so uh, I do believe like we have most of our website and everything like linked up through HubSpot so you can get some like really cool in-depth tracking on prospects and things like that through the through the sales cycle if, if you use it as more you know a bit of your CMS. Um, I don't really get involved much with all of that but yeah I mean to me HubSpot is if it makes sense for the org it really consolidates a lot of tools so you can you know build your landing pages in there and I know that um salesforce marketing cloud I, i'm not as familiar with that but i, I do know that they're i think they're trying to compete in that space don't know how much it is but hubspot's you know, definitely done a great job sounds like a wix how user-friendly wix is versus wordpress relationship or something moment or generation of software i'd say hubspot is very much a pain to set up but once it's set up it's yeah. very good <laughs> okay cool Awesome. Um, so do you use any Salesforce for CRM or any, I mean, it's like everyone's yeah. Like, a little, yeah. Yeah. We have clients in Salesforce. So definitely, um, you know, we're in there sometimes I look at their reports and deal pipelines and stuff. Um, I've used Salesforce for a lot of my career HubSpot for some of it too. Um, but I came here at Alti Sales and they're on HubSpot. So. Amazing. Do you have to be 70% Terminator in tech stack knowledge and always being reviewing or, do they have you as more of this, you know, uh, you're such a presenter, dude. And yeah. I'm a presenter in a really weird Willy Wonka way, but you're a very, uh, you know, straight cut presenter. And yeah. Walker on video. Gosh, I can't say it enough. Oh, I, I both, but that. they snag you for both of those skills because that's hard. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I, I I mean I do love data and numbers. Um at Alti Sales, Tito is probably the most like ridiculous like data mad scientist I've ever seen. Like we have we have spreadsheets for days that like literally break down every point. Like so if I want to look at AE, I can I know how many meetings they've had sent to them, I know where in the pipeline they dropped, I know how many have converted to revenue or closed walls without even going into their CRM. We have all of that. So um, we have a really robust process of how it works there. It makes my life super easy. I love it. Um, historically, yeah, though, um, definitely look at the reports. And I, I, But, you know, for me, what I spend a lot of my time doing is like looking at the process of the sale. So, you know, if AE is like telling me, hey, I'm struggling with this and this happened or this is stuck yeah. or this keeps happening, what I'm going to do is look at, you know, their calls with those people and I'm going to pull out like, you didn't quantify pain. This is why this is stuck. This is why you're sending an email like, hey, just following up because you have nothing better to fucking say. Because <laughs> you didn't run that first call as well as you should have and quantified the pain, right? And didn't get to a larger initiative. So um, I spent a lot of time doing that. And then wow. on the FDR side, we do track. Hey, wait. There's, there is leaders that'll just do a comment on Gong or whatever you're using for your call recordings. Uh, uh, college 
people listening to this that are thinking about an SDR career, all the calls are recorded. And so your manager uh, can, can just listen in during your call or after it sounds late night with cookies and milk, your manager is going through them and finding out right here is where you could have more open-endedly getting him to keep expanding on the pain that he was having or something. But some people just do a little comment to, to show leadership that they're looking at the gong calls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do look at the calls uh, because like, it's how I help. It's how I help the people I work with. So like I, I can talk about theory and I, and I can present and I can tell you all these yeah, strategies. Exactly. On discovery, but I need to see what's happening to be able to like actually move the needle. I think that's the difference in training and coaching. So like my first session with them, I'm training you, I'm training you how to run a discovery call and the principles here past that I'm coaching you on what you're actually doing and what's happening to like move the needle. And, and dude, I'm just going to dig in here. Like, this isn't something you coaching them based on the protocol that are just fluffy rules that you have to hit by your company. This is with video, with the calls being recorded, the a modern sales managers, one of his primary things is to become a listener scientist of his team's calls. I think we just hit on something. It's like, it's like, if you don't do that, you're missing the whole real value add of sales platforms, because eh? there's a lot of bubbly stuff in this world too, in that, in the sales enablement space. I think the first time I listened to my gong calls and then listened to the best sales rep, even though he was in New York on the New York team, I saw him on the leaderboard. So I just started becoming a mad scientist as an SDR late night and it's just like i knew that this would be so much harder to get this better quickly and ramp this quickly without going it was such a memorable experience so yeah 100 percent. and I, i'm so surprised at the amount of people that like don't record um like they they don't record their things or oh i'm sorry i didn't add we use chorus um but you know, i didn't add chorus in there or whatever or the client i didn't want to make them feel uncomfortable it's like it's totally horseshit man like we're not talking about anything sensitive on this call that you know can't be reviewed by our internal team like it's uh one out of a million maybe you know like and for chatterboxes like me like i'm freaking raising my hand to my own podcast i just can't shut up it, it, it for chatterboxes or eccentric ADHD unmedicated ADHD kids. Um, and that's a lot of college students that may be thinking about an SDR career. So it's not so weird and whack for me to say. It's a very bubbly career where you're allowed to be yourself. And, uh, you know, you're, you, it, it, it helps you be able to dynamically get better at less talky time. And I, you know, I don't know exactly how it looks on, what are you using for your call recordings? Is it HubSpot? Use chorus. use chorus. Chorus. But on Gong, it shows the visual audio purple voice clip. And then it shows Jacob's talk time, 50%. Their talk time, you know, 40, 30%. And you're trying to talk less. And visually seeing that, it, it, it was kind of like you feel like a, a doofus when you see that you're 85% talk. You, you just get, you're all like buzzed that you just had a great call. You get off and you see that you blab, you blabbered for the whole time. Like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. You went on three five minute monologues here. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, talk time is definitely something I look at. But again, going back to like coaching versus training. I don't, I don't buy into this like set rule of this percentage and that percentage. Um, so my own personal career, for example, I used to very much sell through seminars. So I'd give a 45 minute presentation and then people would just be lined up to sign up afterwards. And that's all me talking, you know, I didn't do anything. So there is a way to present and it's something that we teach on in Aussie sales around illumination and a way to like tell a story that gets people engaged and it helps them, you know, move along the buyer's journey. So, you know, we've talked about this before, but in outbound, they're coming in and most likely an unaware buying phase. Like that's the state that they're in. They're unaware of even the problem or they might be a problem aware, but they're not, haven't decided to do anything about it yet or don't know how to do anything about it. And when someone comes in inbound, they're in phase three, which is considerations. They've already decided this is a problem worth yep. tackling. We're going to do it this way. We're going to put this team on it and go figure it out. And most reps are talking to people in initial discovery call and from outbound source, like they're already in consideration stage. And that's why they're not moving deals along. So there's definitely more talk time in a, an initial discovery call 
from an outbound standpoint than like if it came inbound because we do have to illuminate and show them like why change and we have to help them get there. But I typically, man, if it, if it gets, if it get, if, if customer talk time gets like below like 38%, that's when I'm going to start digging in and seeing like, where can we help this rep like learn how to pause and ask more questions and get them engaged in the story? Because like, we don't just want to sit here and present, like we want to get them engaged in the story we're telling, even when we're going through that illumination process. You know? I love this. I really think audience of SDR Alpha Podcast, please agree with us in the comments. I mean, I'm the only one that pretty much comments. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, if, if we hit on something very Albert Einstein-y, I think the cool, I've had so many, uh, directors and head of sales and everything. And I think the ones that, you know, you mentioned it, I mean, that's a primary thing that you're a scientist of listening to your team's calls. Otherwise you're not really utilizing the modern sales software. You're, you well, know, it's 22 there, right? Like a lot of them are wearing a lot of hats and like, they don't know, especially if it's startup world, like AB series, like you're still probably wearing three different hats and you're trying, maybe you might even be in a player coach role, which is like the worst fucking thing in the world. I don't know why companies even consider that. Like you can't do your job and carry a quota and, and help your team hit theirs. Like, it's just not going to work that way. You don't have time to do the things like yeah. call with me. I could rant on this all day, but I'm, it yeah. reminds me of the teacher grading all the essays. You finish a huge essay that they've assigned and then you think about them taking the next month to, to read the same essay on the same book report. And, uh, oh, there's that thought. Okay, I know you have to get back to your crushing of the sales word at sales world at Alti Sales and Blissful Prospecting. Ethan Parker, thank you for joining me. And Tweety, who is sleeping inside my shirt. Favorite part of the pod, pod spirit fingers, but that's after. Second favorite part of the pod, Ethan. You are now Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator. You can go back in time. What would you advise? What would your advice be to your younger self on the personal and professional side? I'm sure it can help a lot of people. Let's go, Ethan. Let's bring this energy up. Yeah, two parts. Uh, so one, I'm, I'm very, uh, I would not be where I'm at if I haven't done the things that I've done. So change nothing. Um, but uh, a better answer to that, because I feel like that's a bit, um, you know, stereotypical. Yeah. Um, you know, what I've been dwelling on a lot more late and the older I get is like not chasing money so hard. I took a lot of jobs just for paychecks and like big commission checks. And I sold a lot of things that I didn't give a shit about and um, never, never failed, you know, get into that and it gets old. You don't like doing it anymore. So it's not all about the money. Make sure you're doing something that you love, a product that you can get behind, feel like whatever that means for you, for me, like I want to feel like I'm actually helping these people in this business and, you know, selling you a, you know, a MarTech tool that you don't need isn't doing it for me. So, um, you know, don't, uh, don't make all of your decisions about the money or do, and just be willing to correct course fast. There's exactly. other things that are going because so. it led you, you know, going through that. Sometimes you have to go through a few careers that aren't the right fit or something. And you never would regret it. You never, I wouldn't take that chance. I love where I'm at. It sounds like you love where you're at, Ethan, man. I'm, I'm glad that you're living the dream. You're doing something that makes you this energetic on camera. You have great video presence. Thank you for coming to the SDR Alpha podcast. Let's do some pod spirit fingers. Man, do I love talking. Thank God I have a podcast to do so. Tweety, get them up. Get those wings up, Tweety, or you don't get duck food. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> and now we're going to get flagged by P P PETA. I I'll have everyone know that this duck is spoiled past any duck on earth. I think we can all tell. <laughs> Ethan, thank you so much, brother. I'll have to have you on again soon. Thanks. Crush it.